analog versus digital. What is it and why is it important? Well, we touched on it in the Why Vinyl video, but now we're going to go a little more in depth for those who are actually very curious. Um, an analog recording is one that's recorded directly to tape and then put on a record for you to hear. And digital involves a lot of files and compression and, you know, transferring between a lot of different devices before it finally reaches your ears. Both the same music, but very different ways of transmitting them, and the way they're transmitted affects the sound quite a bit. A lot of people like vinyl because of the warm sound, and basically what that is is the closest thing you get to hearing a live performance. Yeah, like when you hear an analog recording, if you have a good setup, you'll be able to hear it almost like you're in the studio with them. You hear every, you know, slide of the guitar, every string being plucked. It's, it's a very cool personal experience. And in digital, most of that gets whitewashed. Yeah, there's something called the loudness wars, which I'm not going to talk your ear off, but you should Google it if you're interested. And basically it talks about how digital music, especially for radio, is being very compressed to the point where all the life, like the, uh, the layers and the texture that the music has on an analog recording is completely wiped out. And it becomes this just like wall of sound. And it loses a lot of the magic that the music was intended to have by the artist. But none of this matters if you don't have a decent turntable or needle, which you can go back and see our video about turntables and needles down here. Most LPs, 12-inch records, are going to be cut at 33 RPM. That's standard, but a lot of them are cut at 45, which is actually a way to cut records to make them have a higher audio fidelity. Not always, but usually they'll sound better on 45. 7-inch records are also 45 RPM for the most part, so that's a good, you know, thing to know when you're taking changing the speed of your record take note of this because it's gonna say on your record what speed it is and if you don't change it it won't sound like the record I've done this before and got really scared because it sounded like demonic voices and Matt was like you don't have the right speed so you should know this very important to someone barely starting but not every record says it so you might have to check discogs or Google it to actually find out some records they hide it it might be in the dead wax which is the area right outside the label where the needle usually hits and then picks up and goes back they usually have things etched in there and sometimes it'll be the speed but default 33 a lot of modern records are unfortunately oversized CDs you know they're just in to cash in on the new resurgence of vinyl and that's not good. Uh, if you have a digital file put on a, on a record, you know, it's possible to do that, but you're overpaying. You might as well just get a CD at that point. Analog recordings are kind of tricky to find out if it's actually recorded analog. A lot of people like Jack White, uh, the guys from Queens of the Stone Age, people like that, they really respect analog recording and all of their stuff is analog. Um, if a record comes out and it's analog, it's going to definitely be boasted about on the packaging. They'll talk about how it's fully analog and all that stuff, but just because it says mastered for vinyl does not mean that it's going to be analog. A lot of digital sourcing says that just to skirt the issue, and that's not cool. So definitely Google it, check Discogs, and check Steve Hoffman forums, and see what people say about the records, because you, want, you don't want to buy an oversized CD. You just don't want to do it. Unless you just like it because of the cover and whatever. In which case, do whatever you want. Yeah. And that brings us to reissues, and Matt, you can take this one. <laughs> Reissues are becoming very popular, older albums being redone, remastered, and uh, re-released in the modern day. And it seems like an easy way to get an album that you want. However, if you do a little digging online or in real life, you can usually find those albums in a store for as cheap as the reissue, if not cheaper. Plus, they're guaranteed to be analog as opposed to the reissues, which oftentimes are digital. I think that reissues are mostly used for records that are way too rare to find. Uh, if you know a record's been out of print for 40 years and they reissue it, you're not going to spend 300, 400 dollars on the record. You're going to spend 20. Um, so that's a good a good way to to go about buying reissues. Stores like Urban Outfitters are full of reissues that are most likely digitally sourced and not worth your money. But at the end of the day, if you just want a record to put it on while there's people in your house or you don't mind the sound quality, then go for it. Get digital. It does not matter. I have some digital. But this is just for the people that are very interested in the sound quality of their records. We hope we gave you some good tips. If there's anything else you want us to talk about, let us know. Now go forth and be vinyl people like us. Commence. I'm Matt. And I'm Sandy. And this is... Oh, damn it, Sandy. What? Are you kidding me?